Good evening and welcome to My Future. I'm Ruven Eko. This evening we continue again learning more and more about STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. The new campaign that's been launched by the Ministry of Higher, Tertiary and Education, Science and Technology Development. Now it's been a couple of weeks since this was rolled out and it's also been maybe two or so weeks since the O-level ZIMSEC results came out. So now is the time to really assess and see how successful STEM has been so far. So we have the Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development back in studio to give us an update. Kuti Iva Papi Nestem. Let me introduce now the Deputy Minister, Dr. Godfrey Gandawa. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ruben. Now, uh, Dr. Godfrey Gandawa is also the ZANU PF Secretary for Science and Technology for Mashana Land West, and he's also the ZANU PF MP for Magunje constituency. <laughs> All right, so um, Dr. Gandawa, tell us um, what's the position of STEM to date? To date, uh, we have performed very well because so far we have had about 2,000 applications that are being processed and we have already paid for 1,439 students across the country. 1,439 as of today. Yeah, as of today right. have been paid for. Right. While we are processing about in excess of 2,000, which we hope by the end of the week we should have paid for. Making it 3,139 in total sure. um, by the end of this by week, the end of the being week. Friday. Yeah. And um, what's your target? How many can you afford to pay for? We wanted to increase from 2,500 to at least 5,000. So but I decided to touch Rika. We are not yet there. Right. But provisionally, we have funds to pay for 8,871 students. We are taking that from the people that did the combinations, people that are eligible right. to get into the STEM subjects. Should that number register, 8,871, we are able to pay for that. That is a huge number. That's a big jump from the 1,000 you're talking about. And now we're well into the first term of school. So do you think that you're going to reach those numbers for the 2016 intake, or is it a bit too late? Our science and technology officers on the ground are approaching each and every school to make sure that we hit the target at least for 5,000. Right. But uh, we are encouraging the parents and the students to take or seize the opportunity and get paid for. What do you think is the setback? I mean, there's something so appealing about knowing that your tuition um, fees are going to be paid for for an entire year, both for the students and for the parents. So what do you think is slowing people down or stopping them from registering for STEM? Uh, you know, in my view, mm. our people are not quick to respond to things like this. In most cases, they think it's propaganda. Or they think it's not true. They think it's not true. Right. Uh, because they think the economy isn't performing well, and it's not practical that the government will pay. Right. But the moment we started paying, we actually made it deliberate that we pay for those. We are paying exactly when you submit your application, we pay for you. Mm -hmm. We wanted to show the nation that we are serious in developing science and you will be paid for. Some still don't even believe after receiving a confirmation of payment. Right. They still wonder, am I dreaming? Because they smana from right. heaven. I mean, if you were not government, uh, Dr. Gandawa, would you believe yourself? We have instances where the government has had programs and still programs that are ongoing, whether it's cadetship, or, you know, whether it's BEAM, there are instances where the government has let the people down. So can we blame people for not believing you? We can't blame them. Mm. But in most cases, you need to take a chance because in this case, you lose nothing by registering. So one must just try and find out like what the others have done. They've applied and they've been paid for. You say you lose nothing, but I think this is where we need to analyze because you look at the expectations the Zimbabwean people have had right um, where there are instances where they've been promised certain things and they have not come to fruition regardless of what it is so the, the what what they do lose is that spirit that love that passion that patriotism that makes them stand behind their government when their government makes a decision on their behalf when their government says we're going to do a b and c for you for them to come rallying to your support and come behind you you need to understand that there's a history of being let down I think this will become a lesson to the people of Zimbabwe mm. to say when government promises, they will deliver. Like in this instance, we had properly m uh, planned for the program and the campaign, we thought the campaign spoke for itself 
we were serious and we continue to be serious in developing science. So out of a population of over 13 million people, how many students are there rather that are at primary, secondary level that are supposed to be registering for A level this year? The, the number with the combination right. of uh, that uh, eligible... Not with the combination, but just high school students. 30,000. 30,000. 30, yeah. Now out of that 30,000, only 1,439 have registered for STEM. They have accessed the facility uh -huh. and currently paid for now. Right. But they continue to trickle in from provinces right. to register for the facility. Right. And so what is the cut-off date? Because at the end of the day, A-level is not a, an easy level to enter. So you don't want the students to miss too much of school. So, or are you going to cut off at a certain we, date? We are going to allow them to continue to register until the start of the second term. Because in most cases, you realize that people continue to register. Some even during the holiday period that we're getting into, uh, schools uh, will be still registering students. For as long as schools are registering for until the holiday, we will be able to register them and pay. But we are encouraging them to quickly, because you know it's a process right. that we need to, to, to fulfill. So we encourage them to register early so that the fees are paid before schools open. So some of these students are going to be starting lower six in second term? Correct. Uh, because I think we, they still go two weeks. And I think in three weeks' time, the schools will, will close. It will be Easter, yeah. Uh, yes. And uh, by second term, some students will still be registering for, um, for A level. Aren't they going to be behind? I, How I, do you start a year, you know, two-thirds of the way in? It has always happened. You know, it's, it, it, yeah, it's, it, it has always happened that uh, the, first, uh, the, the, first, uh, the first term, because mm -hmm. of the short, uh, the term is short. Because the, the results, come out, the results anyway. come out late anyway, sure. Yeah. But so, we so no tasa, no tanga. All right, so in the instance of these results, um, there was an article about St. Ignatius, one of these uh, schools, where they were, you know, obviously <coughs> celebrating their very high pass rate and uh, talking about how getting into A-level, you need to have up to 12 A's, rather, to enter A-level at St. Ignatius, and very, very high standard of, of passing. So what are we saying with regards to the STEM requirements? where you're saying pass with a C grade or higher, yet there are some schools like this that are not allowing students into A level I with would, a C. Uh, I would not comment, specifically comment on that particular school because I am not sure about uh, the uh, criteria for mm -hmm. enrollment. But uh, we don't encourage such kind of behavior because it means you are disadvantaging other students. We, we want the schools to register students according to the pass, because in Zimbabwe, a C is regarded as a pass. And uh, what about, okay, this is what I'm saying, that did the ministry engage high schools and say, we are rolling out this campaign in order to support us and for us to support each other. Your standard of entry into A-level is such and such, but as ministry, we'd like you to open it up to those that passed with a C. Was mm. this, dis did this discourse happen? Uh, that falls under the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education. And as a government policy, a C is regarded as a pass. But certain schools then tend to come up with their own criteria, which I am which saying... Which is their right to do? I don't think it's correct to do that. They are using it as a criteria to screen the students. Because some schools have a high pass rate. And they have standards, we expect which is why over years they are staying as those schools that have the top pass mark in the country. We expect all schools to have uh, the same standard and all the teachers should be able to produce quality students. All right, we'll pick this up right after the break uh, as we uh, you know, continue to debate about STEM and some of the areas that we might question and say, you know, is it fair, is it correct for schools to be maybe forced to have a pass mark of C? when some schools want A students. We'll be right back. This is my future.
Welcome back to My Future. I'm Ruven Eko in studio this evening with Dr. Godfrey Gandawa, Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development. We're discussing STEM and right before the break we were engaged in somewhat of a debate about uh, the, the criteria for high schools to accept students at A level or rather at lower six or form five. Um, and Ministry is saying, I guess from him, that it's, he doesn't feel it's right for students to be turned away because they didn't get an A or they didn't get a B. Um, by your standards, uh, Dr. Gandawa, you believe a C should be the entry point, regardless of STEM. Regardless of STEM. Right. And it's government policy that a C mm. is a pass right. in Zimbabwe. So schools should be able to admit uh, students that you have C's. Mm -hmm. Because it does not mean when you get a C, you not you have passed right. uh, all level. By your standard, but not by that by school the standard. standard. But every school has standards, uh, Dr. Gandawa. That's why all, they have a reputation schools, and a legacy. All schools are guided by government policy. So government we policy deviate, says... We cannot deviate from that. Dr. Gandawa, I would say, 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 I not a STEM campaign. Great it's government better, policy. That's government policy. All right. Well, there you yeah. have it. So I guess if we're hearing it from the minister representing government, that is the policy. So schools that are doing this, what then is the penalty? Because yeah, now it falls. It might need for us to engage our sister ministry, the Minister of Primary and Secondary right. Education, mm -hmm. because it falls under their purview. Right. We cannot necessarily uh, penalize the schools ourselves, but we have to engage our counterparts. Right. and see how best we can solve the, the problem. Okay. But at the end of the day, it's disadvantaging the students mm -hmm. uh, that would have benefited from this program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we ask out of, uh, what was it, 80,000 80, uh, students that are potentially entering a lower six this year. There are 1,439. 8, 8, have a potential to enter into the STEM combination. Into the STEM combination, mm. okay. Mm. But 80,000 students, but 8,800 can qualify for STEM. Mm. And out of that 8,800, 1,439 have registered to date, have had their fees paid for by ZimDef and the ministry, and basically the children are in school now, right? Obviously some of them still surprised and uh, unable to believe that this is really happening, mm. but it's happening. Mm. So now to understand this huge disparity and trying to ask why so many of them have not yet registered, that are able to register, there's some comments that have come on because it is not possible for us to have everybody in the studio to find out what happens. So we take from online comments, from social media, from Twitter, Facebook, um, and online publications to find out what people out there are really saying and thinking about STEM. So here's some of the comments and questions. Um, so here's a question. Um, good idea, Professor. I guess this is in reference to, to your minister. But this should not have been the first step. What we need is to build more laboratories and train STEM teachers. Do you think that should have been the first step? Because it seems like you've gone the other way around. Rolling out STEM and then in the process also training teachers and then saying you'll win a laboratory and you'll win equipment. Was this not the, um, the right way to have gone around it? The prize for winning a laboratory is not um, attached to the uh, construction generally of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure in, in secondary schools falls under the purview of uh, our sister ministry, the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education. So they must be seized with uh, the construction of laboratories. Mm -hmm. And I agree with uh, this person to say construction of libraries will also help us, uh, I mean of laboratories, will also help us, you know, to serve the people uh, best or right. e efficiently. Right. But it falls under our sister ministry. And the training of teachers falls under our, our purview and we are geared, we have already embarked on an extensive teacher training program, especially the science teachers. Mm -hmm. And of, to date, we have 2,900 science teachers enrolled at the Bindura University of Science Education. And we have instructed our universities to make sure that they increase the number of science teachers that we train. And these teachers are going to be churned out probably in the next two, three, four years, correct? Yes. But right now, do we have the capacity? Because another question that's come in here, or rather a comment, is rural schools always lose out because not even a single STEM subject is taught there. No teachers, no labs. So Agreed. it's the same message. Agreed. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, the rural schools, uh, 
always are disadvantaged because uh, it has taken us as a, a long time as a government to have these schools have laboratory infrastructure. And you realize most of the rural schools are also teaching integrated science, mm -hmm. which is not the hard sciences and the pure sciences. Right. It's something that we really need to seriously correct. I buy into what the these the people are saying, saying. The comments, right. uh, the comments right. are saying. Okay. It's something that as a government, we really need to look into and revamp. But there is a starting point, you see. Mm -hmm. We are starting here. It does not mean we must end here. I think we need to look into these things and correct them from the the bottom in the schools right make sure that we have the labs and we also have the teachers right. that will then train the students another comment we lecturers in stem and universities fully support government and our minister on promoting uptake of science subjects at a level since the expiry of the zimbabwe cuba science teacher training program this is the first time government has come boldly in support of stem we applaud the minister for being the first political head of the ministry of higher tertiary education science and technology development of fully understanding the mandate given upon him by his excellency the president that stem was not just a sidekick in the ministry. Aita Chake Di Hombarumi. Let's all support this marvelous intervention. That's, that, that's, that, that's good. It shows uh, some of us or mm. some of our people, you know, appreciate right. the direction that we're taking. All right. And then um, another comment here in complete contrast to this one. Mm -hmm. I studied chemistry at a uh, degree level with one of the local universities. Some of my colleagues have not found meaningful engagements in Zimbabwe. This speaks to the next step. Yeah. Which uh, is your step, your higher tertiary education. Correct. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's due to the industry that is ailing. Because most of our, like the chemical engineering and the engineering fields are quite affected because of the, the nature mm -hmm. of the jobs. But I think it's not a permanent feature in the, in the country. Uh, things will improve. And, but these people will become handy when the economy starts to improve. Right. Mm -hmm. You're certain of that? I'm very positive ab about it. Is this a five-year plan, a ten-year plan? Because it's not a next-year plan. I, this should follow within a period of uh, three to four, three, four years. Right. We should start to realize uh, the benefits right. of, 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 of such programs. Right. Yeah. And I believe that, uh, you know, we, we have had explained to us very clearly that the reason why this really was rolled out was because there has been a, a shortage of uh, students taking up science subjects at A-level and uh, further educating themselves along those lines, right? One of the main reasons. Now, here's a comment saying, the truth of the matter is we don't have a shortage of people taking science at A-level. In some years, there's actually a surplus and universities have a hard time selecting students. This is more of a political move. Or maybe you think you can revive the economy by promoting sciences. While the, um, we maybe some of you are out of touch with reality, commercials and arts are as important as well and play key roles in any healthy economy. Some countries have a shortage of students taking STEM subjects, but this is far from true. You know, Ruveneko, sometimes people tend to politicize mm. a thing that is not political. Like in this <laughs> regard, we have statistics that show that our universities are competing. We have 15 universities and they are competing for 2,500 students that enroll in the STEM right. courses. Mm -hmm. So it's a reality. There is a fact. We did a research and we came up with these figures mm -hmm. and we are very positive. We have a shortage. If you take the other comments that are coming from that people, they say, where are the teachers? Mm -hmm. It shows you there is a shortage of the sciences. In general. In general. Right. So, uh, world over, world over, if you want to develop a country, and countries that are developing are shifting towards the STEM, the future jobs, jobs of the future, are always going to come from the STEM fields. Right. Yeah. Can I my numbers in UIO for 2016? Are you just going to sit on the money or are you going to offer the money to other students, perhaps that are studying other subjects and that deserve equal opportunity? Uh, you, you realize uh, initially when we launched the program, we said the fund has always been supporting polytechnics and universities. Right. And we decided to take a, a certain portion of the budget towards these students. There is always areas where we could apply the fund. Mm -hmm. But as a budgetary uh, effect, we had allocated this four million towards these students. But mm -hmm. otherwise, we can channel it in other avenues. This is only a start. Mm -hmm. We might still uh, 
come up with a program to assist other areas, sure. be even in the polytechnics and the universities. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Godfrey Gandawa. Thank you. Welcome. All right. That's all from Dr. Gandawa tonight on My Future. Now, the truth of what's really going on with STEM does not exist in this studio. Um, neither does it exist where you're sitting. It exists on the streets. And you're going to find out, hear from parents and students about what they really think about STEM. Those that have registered, those that are waiting to, and those that still have their reservations. I'm quite sure about STEM subject that if you pass maths, physics, chemistry, and buy your, uh, the government will pay for your school fees and give you other stationery to use for your education. My sister is going for Oz sometime this year, maybe second term. Uh, I can't say qualify for STEM because I need six A's, not seven. I had with these seven A's. So I got about to see Ananas. Uh, this year, there are 43. 43 students. They've registered for MPC and MBC, and those are the ones who had applied for STEM. The government say that if you do sciences at O level, then you pass them, right? They'll pay for your school fees at the A level. Then, but then I don't know anyone who has been, who has passed that I know of and is being paid. His school fees is getting paid by the government so far by our school. Basically, parents, when they, were, they saw the adverts in the media, they came here asking for STEM, STEM uh, subjects. Then we told them, uh, uh, because we realized that there's a confusion, we realized that it will be our responsibility to do that on their behalf. That's when we had to contact uh, Zimdev, and the Zimdev had to email the forms here, and then we, we had to download the email and then duplicate the forms and give them the students. I'm Ellen Yesharai and I'm doing STEM subjects, MS, Physics, Chemistry. Well, I was registered for STEM when I once said that there's a STEM program where the government is paying our school fees. And when I, I already paid my school fees, but actually I'm, my parents are going to get reimbursement after the government pays the school fees. Do you know about STEM subjects? No, we don't. Why is it you don't know? Because we have not been informed. As far as STEM is concerned, uh, I've got my reservations. Uh, from my own opinion, I think the government should uh, really put more focus on um, our um, graduates, our science graduates, our engineering graduates. Um, I know of engineering graduates who are TIL operators government should, uh, instead of uh, concentrating on um, high school students, I think much emphasis and focus should be on um, our graduates, um, coming up with projects uh, to make our, uh, our graduates relevant to the development of our country. Uh, I registered for STEM subject. After I heard about STEM, uh, I saw uh, a program on television and uh, then I registered for, the, for STEM on, at my school. I'm doing MPC. And after that, I want to be a computer scientist. Uh, from schools that uh, have students have gone there, they've been promised to be, uh, to be refunded of their money because the government, the STEM is going to pay through the, uh, through the bank, the school's bank. We refund them all the money in terms of the, the fees that they paid, we will refund every cent of it in, to the parents or the students. I registered for STEM subjects. I had seven A's and three B's. I'm doing maths, physics, and chemistry right now. When I grow up, I want to be a, an electronic engineer. Direct them on how to fill the forms. After that, they don't know what is the... At the moment, they are just in the dark. I take STEM subjects at high school and I registered for them last week. I think what we must add is that if we are talking of technology, there is another combination that they skipped which is uh, maths, physics, and TG, which is a very relevant subject to, to, uh, to technology. We also have mathematics, geography, and TG also. Those are relevant to technology. In the future, I'm planning to study chemical engineering at United at University of Zimbabwe. Our problem, basically, at Harare High, it is a very popular school. And the number of students that we got here, the biggest number, the age is ranging from 6 to 12. So for the selection, it was very difficult for us.
to accommodate B's and C's because of that number. I think what we need to do is to wait until they have paid into the accounts, then we can assure our parents that it is true that STEM is here and here to stay. That's it from us on My Future this evening. I'm Ruveneko. Good night. Be good. And if you can't be good, be safe. <laughs> Uti Uzitze Mahara, Dai Zira Guti, and the machine the handy, Vascana and Dai Dai, Chirio Miriso Chirio, in Gasu Tenderi, Gasu Yenderi, Tian, Ariel.